History is strewn with stories of survival, escape, and rescue, but one rescue story from the Second World War has been well and truly swept under the rug, despite it being one of the greatest rescue operations of the war. While at least the Western world was fixated on the Allied invasion of Western Europe, something else was going down in that highly tense part of Europe known back then as Yugoslavia, specifically in Serbia. In this video, we delve into Operation Halyard, in which the Allies worked with the locals to get stranded airmen out of Axis-occupied Serbia. After the Allies smashed the Axis forces on the Italian island of Sicily in August 1943, Mussolini's regime crumbled down, Italy capitulated, and Allied forces set up shop in southern Italy. But they didn't just sit there and gloat. Instead, they used Italy as a launch pad from which they would wreak havoc in Europe. Specifically, the United States Army Air Force's 15th Air Force bombed crucial Axis-held infrastructure in Germany, Hungary, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, Croatia, and parts of Serbia the latter two being constituent states of what was then Yugoslavia. Some of their juiciest targets included the oil fields and oil refineries which fueled Hitler's war machine. Between October 1943 and October 1944, the 15th Air Force carried out some 20,000 sorties with around 500 heavy bombers and 100 fighter escorts. In this time, they lost almost half of their bombers and fighters, but merely a tenth of their airmen. Many of these airmen bailed out of their doomed aircraft, only to parachute into Axis-occupied territories. As you might have guessed, many American airmen landed in Serbia, where they were either captured by the enemy, or, as was preferable, sheltered by the locals. The thing is, the locals were at war with each other as well as with their occupiers, so politics ended up playing a large part in the rescue operations that followed. Basically, the royalist Chetniks and communist partisans, each equipped with a guerrilla army of their own, were at each other's throats, with both sides working with the Axis at some time or another too. To reiterate, it was quite a hairy situation, but by this point in the war, the British were basically chummy with the communist partisans and their leader, Marshal Josip Broz Tito, and encouraged the Americans to get in on that too. But American airmen weren't being taken in by Tito's partisans alone. The Chetniks, led by General Draja Mihailovic, were taking care of them too, eager to maintain favor with the Americans, who they hoped would ultimately lend them a helping hand in their fight against the partisans. In the words of American Rear Admiral Thomas T. Matteson, it may be difficult to understand how the Chetniks could rescue American airmen from the Germans, as they did collaborate with these very same forces. The Chetniks considered the partisan communist movement a far greater threat than the Germans, Allied support was Mihailovich's only means of reversing the partisan takeover. In fact, evacuated Americans were a significant source of first-rate public relations on behalf of the Chetniks. While the Allies had been bombing Europe out of Italy since October 1943, the first time an American airman bailed out over Serbia was in January the year after. In the first half of 1944, rescue operations did occur, but they weren't as well organized as they were from July onwards. Starting in January, partisan forces, Chetnik forces, and even plain old Serbian peasants were risking their lives to shelter Allied airmen, going as far as to engage in direct combat against Axis forces. The Germans were well aware of this, offering monetary rewards to peasants in exchange for Allied airmen, but few, if any, took the cash. According to author Kirk Ford, the Allied airmen had seen Chetnik soldiers give their lives to save them from capture and had been protected and well-treated by Mihailovic's forces and by the Serbian peasantry. In March 1944, Mihailovic ordered the construction of an improvised airstrip in the village of Pranjani, which he hoped the Allies could evacuate their airmen. Unfortunately though, most of the 25 Allied airmen waiting nearby basically thought the airstrip was trash, preferring to go on foot than risk takeoff from Pranjani. In the words of the Chetnik officer who oversaw the airstrip's construction, more than a hundred diggers and as many ox-drawn carts were used to build. Because of the greater secrecy, we worked mostly at night. 
The digging, leveling, and cutting down of trees created blisters on our hands. Later that year, following some much needed media attention, the Allies decided to take things up a notch. In July 1944, the US Office of Strategic Services, or OSS, buddied up with the US 15th Air Force to create two aircrew rescue units, or ACRUs. The first ACRU was tasked with conducting rescue operations via Mihailovich and his Chetniks, while the second was tasked with conducting rescues via Tito and his partisans. The first ACRU mission was codenamed Operation Halyard. Having spent about a year working with the Chetniks in the past, an OSS officer by the name of Lieutenant George Musselin spearheaded Operation Halyard, with OSS agent Michael Rudjicic and radio operator Arthur Giblian as his right and left hand men. By early August, more than 250 Allied airmen were waiting within a 16 km or 10 mile radius of the airstrip, many expecting to escape Serbia on one of the Allied planes that were coming to deliver the Halyard team. Notably, some 3,000 Chetnik soldiers set up in the area too, ready to waste some Germans if poop hit the fan. But only one plane arrived, and it didn't even land. Deciding that Mihailovic's airstrip was still, in fact, trash, Musilin, Rajicic, and Jiblian parachuted out of said plane instead, planning to work with the Chetniks and do this thing properly. When his feet touched the ground, Musilin, an absolute bear of a man, was welcomed as a hero. In the words of an American airman who witnessed Musilin's arrival, the Chetniks were kissing him and cheering him with tears in their eyes. He was one of the biggest chaps I'd ever seen. Over the next week or so, Musilin worked with the Chetniks and some 300 local laborers to fix up Mihailovich's airstrip and figure out the logistics of evacuating 250 airmen, all while the Germans were quite literally flying over their heads. By the 10th of August, the airstrip was good to go and as many as 14 C-47s began landing and taking off from Pranyani from where the 237 airmen were evacuated throughout the day. Clearly this mission was a great success, but it wasn't over yet. Hearing that others were escaping Serbia via Pranjani, more Allied airmen came. Between the 12th and 18th of August, a further 210 were flown out of the country. Mad lad Muslin got himself out of Serbia shortly after, but his replacement, Captain Nick Lalic, continued Muslin's good work, keeping Operation Halyard alive. Between September and December 1944, 20 men were evacuated from a second, improved airstrip in the village of Kosalaiva, while a further 35 were evacuated from a third airstrip in neighboring Bosnia. All in all, over 500 Allied airmen were evacuated from Serbia via Operation Halyard alone, of which 68% were American. As for Mihailovic, US President Harry S. Truman awarded him the Legion of Merit. Unfortunately, Mihailovic was not alive to receive it, having been gunned down by a communist firing squad in 1946. As it turned out, helping to rescue the airmen was not enough to win the unchecked support of the Allies, nor save the Chetniks from defeat at the hands of the partisans. After the partisans liberated Serbia, the communists governed the country until the breakup of Yugoslavia in 1990. As always though, we're keen to hear what you think. Had you heard of Operation Halyard before this video, were you aware of the complex political climate inside of what was Yugoslavia, and do you feel a little bit sorry for Mihailovic? Let us know your thoughts and more in the comment section below. And just before clicking to that next video guys, make sure you check out our all new channel called The Braved. Thank you guys so much for helping it hit 10,000 subscribers and the videos we're posting there in the future are just going to get better and better. So if you want to know more about some individual badasses from all different areas of history, that channel is the place for you. And if you're more into music, check out our Relax Jack music channel where we use some of the music posted there on the videos posted here. And if you want access to some exclusive videos and a behind the scenes discord where you can chat to myself and the team, make sure you consider donating to our Patreon, it really does help support us guys. And if you just want to join our wider community and receive access to some exclusive posts, check us out on Facebook, Instagram and our discord server. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.